Hello and welcome to I almost made a mistake, but I didn't. I have been talking with some creators from the plant community about this thing that I have been noticing in the past three years online, something that I dislike very much and that gets me triggered basically every time that I see it. I'm not gonna call it like toxicity because I don't really like how we freely use that word, like everything is toxic. Let's call it bad vibes. Bad vibes in the plant community. So what happened? I saw something that I didn't really like, and this is something that I have seen before, but I sort of saw an updated version of it. Didn't love it, bad vibes, and I started to write an outline for a video that very quickly got to be 4,000 words in length, so things got very real very fast. I may not have shared this with you before, so I will share this with you now, but I'm someone that gets triggered very, very easily. I will get angry very easily, and I will get offended. It's like one second we are smelling the roses and enjoying life, and then something happens that will trigger me, and the next thing you know, I am sending voice messages, getting out my pitchforks and torches and whatnot, and clearly writing dissertations on the topic that made me angry. Now, thankfully, by some wild luck, I always managed to sort of calm myself down to find the zen, the zen, we get the zen, and I don't react. And I, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I do. I'm not a saint. After spending like a couple of days on this outline, I just took a step back and I was like, whoa, this thing does not matter. People who already agree with you will still agree with you. And sure, someone might feel validated and there is some value to feeling validated, to having your feelings validated. I don't know how much that is worth. Sometimes, you know, I feel validated and it's like, it's a great feeling for five minutes and then it's gone and the issue is still there. And then people who don't agree with you, it's very unlikely that you will change their mind. It's very, very hard to change someone's mind. So it was like, let's take a step back. Let's take a step back and let's not spend another two or three days filming this video, editing this video, because it's a lot of energy to be putting into this one thing that at the end of the day won't matter. Instead, let's focus here, you know, shift the focus and put the energy into something that might matter. And that is how to deal in situations like this when uh, someone triggers you, when someone makes you angry, and how not to react, if possible. And I think this might be useful for you. Hopefully. <laughs> So the problem is you are taking things too seriously and yes, you are the problem. The problem is you. And that is fine because you know who else is the problem? It's me. The problem is me. Yes, I am the problem as well. I take things way too seriously. I try not to. I really try not to. And I don't know, maybe some people would think that I don't but I do. This illusion of chillness is only but an illusion. And I don't know if anyone ever thought that, you know, there is chillness present here, but I'm telling you there isn't. And the thing is, you know, we take things too seriously and most of the times they need not be taken that seriously. You know, take a step back. What are the things in your life that actually matter? Is this situation is this thing, person, whatever, that caused you this emotional distress, which feels very strong, but let's say that caused you this anger, this very reactive emotion. Is it worth it? And does that matter? Is it a hill that you are ready to die on? And let me just tell you, very few hills, well, not very few, there are many hills out there worth dying on for, but for me, what has shown to be true, it's the, the ones that I want to die on are, very few of those are actually worth dying on. So let's just move on from this analogy because I don't like saying it over and over again, but very few hills are worth it. 
very few hills are worth it. In my opinion, asking yourself if something actually matters can be a difficult question. Does this thing that is taking up all of your emotional energy or a significant portion of it or your mental health or mental space or your time, is it actually worth it? Kind of, you know, discerning here whether the answer is yes or no can be very difficult, especially when you are very emotional. To me, as I said before, everything seems to super matter, but it does not because I'm taking things too seriously. And in most cases, it is safe to assume, at least for me, that it does not matter. And what I should do is take a step back. Don't go in there. And I know this is not satisfying. Believe me, I know this is not satisfying. The one thing, the one thing, the one thing I want to do when someone says something to me that is deeply offensive, that makes me angry, that it makes me frustrated, it makes me emotional, I want to stick it to them. You think you can say that to me and get away with it alive? <laughs> uh, yeah, not a great mindset to have there. Not a great, not a chill mind. We are striving for the chillest of the chillest mindsets and not finding them all the time, most of the time actually, but moving on. I know this is a cliche and Sorry, you're gonna get it served, but not everyone and everything deserves your energy. And that is very true. And in most cases, actually, cliches are true. Something that I've learned in the past three years slash four years is that it's much more important to me to preserve my energy, my time, and my mental health. My advice here is if you do want to engage, try to not go all the way in, you know, just dip your dip, just put your toes in, just dip your toes in the water, get a feeling for the situation. Is this something that you feel you can really make a contribution? Do you think that if you, for example, dedicate 10% of your time or your energy to this, will you solve something for the better? Will you change this person's mind for the better or their opinion, whatever? If the answer is yes, then okay. You are allowed to put your whole foot into the water, but if the answer is no, and listen, be very honest with yourself here and remind yourself, hills are not worth it. Hills are not worth it. And if you judge that it's not worth it, get your toes out of the water, grab a towel, wipe them dry, and leave. Go away. Walk away. And there will be many opportunities in life, because such is life, there will be many opportunities to jump right in. <laughs> jump right in. Sometimes you will just jump right in without thinking. So don't you worry. Don't you worry. You will still have many opportunities to share your opinion with other people and to let the anger out. But maybe we don't do that every time, because that is draining. It is a draining. For me, what usually happens is that I sort of initially regret for not giving someone my peace of mind, but very quickly I forget about it and I realize this was the best course of action, not to engage, because it's like, who are you to me? But do you know how many times I regretted actually engaging in situations where I should not have? Many, 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 many. I don't know if this resonates with you, but it seems to me that since 2020, <laughs> that year keeps coming up. It was a great year, wasn't it? Very unpopular year. But it seems to me that since 2020, I have felt this lack of understanding and it makes me sometimes feel very detached from the people and from the world. It brings in me this negative view of things, negative view of the world that I did not have before. Well, that's actually not true that I didn't have it before, but to a much, much lesser extent. Let's face it, I was never the person to jump around on mountain meadows singing the sound of music, though, bucket list. But what I have noticed in the past three years or so is that I have just become a lot more cynical and that is not something that I love. On some days I am very concerned about how cynical I've become, how negative I have become, how sometimes critical I have become towards myself or maybe towards others, and I do not like it. And I know that we all, especially now, get this sense that the future is gloomy and that <laughs> there is no way out, and it does not 
feel very great. It does not feel good at all. On some days, it's like, it's a emotional pendulum. And some days I'm like, ah, oh, the world is perfect. Everything is fine. Life is beautiful. And then the next day it's like, when will it all end? And I think this is what they call balance. No? Okay, moving on. And if you do feel that you have been mentally or emotionally affected by things that are oftentimes out of our control, you may want to take a minute to listen to me talk about the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue such as depression or anxiety, or if you're simply going through a hard time, therapy might give you some tools to approach your life in a very different way. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more accessible and more affordable, which is very important because finding the right therapist can sometimes be a challenge. You may be limited with the options in your area, or maybe you are an expat living in a foreign country, or you are someone who lives in a small town, which is basically the same. You're not speaking the same language. This is where BetterHelp can be of assistance. It is remote, it is online, and they make matching with a therapist very easy. It just takes filling out a few questions, and in a matter of few days, you can be matched with your new therapist. It is very easy to sign up for and to get matched with a therapist. There is a link in my description, betterhelp.com slash basyplans, that is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash plans. Clicking that link helps support me and my channel, but it is also great for you because I got you 10% off of your first month of BetterHelp, so you can check out therapy and see if it is right with you, and if it is, you get matched with a therapist. Finding the right therapist can be a little bit like dating. <laughs> Not such great vibes the first time. It was great seeing you, but I shan't be doing it again. And that is perfectly fine, and nothing to worry about. You don't have to worry about anything like insurance and who is in your network or not. It is very easy to switch to a new therapist and find someone who will be suitable for you. So if you're struggling, consider if online therapy is right for you. The link in the description is betterhelp.com slash basyplants. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash basyplants. Thank you, BetterHelp, for supporting my channel and thank all of you for sticking through. Now we can go back to the video. Write it down. I don't have a diary. I don't keep a journal. I hate it. I lack the discipline to do it every day. I feel I don't have anything to say and I shan't be doing it. No, thank you. If you do it, great for you. I am proud of you. Not for me. But I do like writing. I always liked writing and I write thoughts down from time to time. And maybe this is exactly like what diary is or what journaling is. There is no really any schedule to it. Is there a name for frantically typing your thoughts in the notes app in the most chaotic way? Because that's what this is. <laughs> that's what this is. And putting labels on this isn't really relevant at all. We don't have to call it anything else but write it down. And I find this very helpful when you're going through something that is very emotional, when you're going through a situation that is perhaps a bit difficult. And I do have a theory why I think this works, and I'm pretty sure there is research about it. And I may may, may even record a full video about it in some long distant future. Not now, don't worry. But writing things down has proven to be very useful for me when I want to give someone a piece of my mind and that person is not super relevant in my life. I also do it for people who are very important in my life, but maybe I'm in a situation that does not require immediate response. And that's the key thing here, like a slight issue, slight issue. You can't always do it. Sometimes you are in a situation that will require your immediate response and that's okay. You do what you gotta do. But if you're in a situation that doesn't, if you can write it down, I find that that really helps for me. It just helps me organize my thoughts. I get to read it again. I get to reorganize the thoughts if something is not in the great order, right? And especially if you're sending like text messages or something like that, it is really helpful. And, you know, I don't sound like a crazy person. <laughs> Sometimes when you react out of this anger or whatever that is very emotional state that you are in, you may not sound that great. I think we have all done it. We have sent a message and we have looked at it and it's like, ooh, unsend, Un don't see, stop looking. No, I don't align. That's not who I am anymore. <laughs> A second has passed. That's not who I am. I do not align with that person. And I also want to just say here, none of this is a replacement for good communication. Good communication comes first. 
but it can be a helpful tool. And I find that it can actually be a helpful tool on the way to achieving good communication. I especially find this useful because a lot of the times, almost all of the time, <laughs> things get a bit overblown in my head. And when I write them down, I really am able to see the situation for what it is. And I'm like, oh, wow, delete, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, trash can. Sometimes I keep them. Sometimes if it's particularly angry, I look at it and I'm like, I just don't even want this on my computer anymore. And I'm so glad that I did not react. Nine out of 10 times, I'm like, I'm super glad that I took some time to write this down, how I feel. I can now delete it and it's gone. But sometimes, you know, depending on the emotion, the things that you write down, you may want to keep. Sometimes it can be very nice, very beautiful too. Very reflective, introspective. What is the word that I'm looking for here? Self-reflection, a mirror. <laughs> but honestly, a lot of the times when I read back these notes, I'm like, what that person was going through is none of my business. That Miro, I do not align with him. I don't know her. I don't know him. That's just not who I am. I am zen. I am chill. I don't know who that is. Never knew him. You know what? I'm very forgetful. I don't know him, but he seems cool. I was not that person 10 minutes ago. The next tip is voice it, but not in the way that you may think. Again, I'm saying none of this is a replacement for good communication. Just keep that in mind, but I find that voicing things in a safe space, and there are several safe spaces which we will mention, can be very useful. Very rarely in situations where you interact with people, you get to do second takes. And when you voice something, whether it be to your friend, to your phone, or just to yourself, like you can just say it out loud in your plant room, whatever, you can do several takes and you can really organize your thoughts. And you also get to hear yourself without anyone there being on the receiving end. And sometimes it's good that there isn't anyone on the receiving end. At least that has been the case for me. I get very emotional when someone is on the receiving end. I don't want to hurt people. And, you know, it's just slightly less real this way. I'm not hurting anyone and I get to kind of rethink what I'm saying and find maybe a better way to say it. And also, if you're like voicing your friends, I find that when I'm voicing my friends, I also tend to really tone it down because obviously I'm not just going to say the most awful things in that voice message. I keep in mind, okay, I'm talking to a human being, I'm talking to my friend, and they're not the ones who are responsible for this. I will just keep that in mind and kind of adjust my tone. And by the end of the voice message, I'm like, you know what, I have sorted this out. And then I, sometimes I delete it, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm like, you know what, that was actually a great voice message and I have arrived at a place that is very important for my friend to hear, which is like, is it? Most likely not. But I will always tell my friends when I start the voice message, listen, I'm very angry and you, it's okay to skip this. It's completely okay to skip this because by the time I'm done, I will be most likely over it. And I follow it up with a text message. That's a angry voice message, just so you know. Sometimes it can be very vulnerable to say some things to your friends. Maybe sometimes you want to sort of pretend you're talking to the person that this situation is about. And in that case, I find that voicing it to your phone or just, again, to your room works really well. So not always will I go to my friends, of course, because sometimes there are things that I don't feel super comfortable sharing because I don't know, like 95% of the times they think I'm like super crazy and that I'm being very unreasonable. In many cases, my friends do validate me. I'm like, no, that's a, that's a real issue. You have a valid concern. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Thank you for the validation. It feels good for five minutes, but then it's like, okay, well, we got to solve this problem now then, I guess. Sometimes validation doesn't feel so great. It'd be like, you know what, Miro, you are completely wrong about that. Sometimes that would feel better because... I can be like, oh, okay, so this is not an issue and I don't have to solve it. Another problem that I often find myself in if someone has said something that deeply upset me is that I have a very difficult time to sort of organize my thoughts. They don't sound so coherent. I sound like a crazy person. I hear myself talking and I just am trying to explain to make sense and it's not working. I see it not working. I hear my arguments. They're not great. And not only am I now frustrated at that person, but I'm also, you know, getting frustrated with 
myself. I'm like, you dumb idiot, what are you doing? You're never gonna convince this person because you're not making any sense. So for that reason, if you don't have to react, it's useful to kind of have this talk with yourself a bit, with your phone, with your friend. It's not gonna be always possible. In many cases, it's not. But when it is, I would recommend doing that first. Listen, I don't think this is a big issue because I sometimes think of it as a practice run or it's like an exercise in organizing my thoughts about this particular situation because often what happens in life, like their buttons, their buttons, their triggers, and people will push the same buttons, the same triggers multiple times and if I get to have this moment with myself and organize my thoughts next time you push those buttons I'm gonna have a great response ready for you and you're gonna think I'm super smart if you push it for the first time and I don't control myself it's really gonna sound like <coughs> not great so I don't know maybe this is like practicing also how to become a better communicator I don't know, there should be a book about all the potential situations in life and I can go through them and form my thoughts on them and prepare what I would like to say because, oh goodness, it is so awful when you are in a situation and you react and like several hours later you're like, dang it, I have a much better response right now and I wish I could say it now. But you can't, it's over. It's the most, most unsatisfying thing. <laughs> it's the most unsatisfying thing. Happens to all of us, I know, I know. I hate it so much too, I hate it so much. Oh Cher, if we could all turn back time. Tip number four is restrict or mute. And this applies to people online. We all have these colleagues, these friends on social media because we all live on social media. If you don't, congratulations, you are my hero. How do you do it? As much as these apps are awful, terrible, they do have some good features and they are restrict or mute and people will never know. They will never know. And sometimes we gotta do that because, you know, it's better not to get into conflicts. Maybe you have a coworker who is super annoying, <laughs> super annoying, but you gotta keep it civil. They will post something that will trigger you and you don't want to engage. And I understand that. I am a person who will avoid conflict as long as I can. Issue is, sometimes that will lead to a much larger conflict. So, you know, take everything with a grain of salt here. But all I'm saying is, if you have a coworker, a cousin, oh my gosh, the cousins, the family, the, oh, cousin, <laughs> okay. Everyone has an opinion that they have to put out. What's up with that? Why are you doing, why do I have not posted on Facebook in such a long, long, long time, except for Hoya photos, but no one cares. Mute them. I understand maybe you don't want to unfollow them. I totally get it. I totally get it. I know that a lot of people will say just unfollow. It's super easy. Maybe you don't want to. Maybe this is a prominent person in your field and it's how the life works, unfortunately. Yeah, be realistic here. It's how the life works. If you unfollow, maybe that will have, that will lead to some questions. Hey, why did, why did you do that? What, what's, what's up? And I do not want to be in that situation. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't think I ever really blocked someone or unfriended someone, but I've muted a lot of people. <laughs> I've muted a lot of people. I love it. Great function. You're still terrible, Mark. And Elon, still terrible. Tip number five, put the phone down. I know, it's duh, duh. I know this is super obvious, but hear me out. I feel that like the downfall, the downfall is such a dramatic word, but the de deterioration, de deterioration, how, do, how does one say that word? The decline of my mental health has been due to the social media. And I, I know that this is true for many people. I know that. And honestly, this topic is so complex that not only does it deserve a video, like I, many channels are dedicated to, to this topic. And I know everyone is like familiar to some extent with it. We all spend a lot of time interacting with people on our phone and inter interacting on social media. And kudos to you if you don't, you are amazing. How do you do it? Make a video, let me know. Thank you very much. But I th sometimes feel that my life would be much, 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 much better if it wasn't in invented. Why? Also, I cannot imagine my life without it. Met so many great friends, could not imagine my life. And I find that restricting apps 
Listen, restricting apps sometimes works. Most of the time it doesn't. It does not work for me. I can bypass anything. It just, it really needs to be. They need to step up the game. They need to step up the game because I can bypass anything and I do not have discipline. So you can restrict your time or put the phone down entirely, which is what I find works best for me. I will just open Spotify, play a podcast, play some music, go through 50 songs until I find my vibe, my mood and put the phone down. And I know this sounds like a very, very simple thing as I said in the beginning, like, duh, of course, put your phone. Listen, the little devices are very, the little devils, they are little devils. It creeps up on you. You don't realize it and you're spending way too much time. You have downloaded another app and you said you were never gonna get on TikTok. You are on TikTok now. Excuses like, oh, you wanna grow my, you, have, you wanna grow your channel. So that's why you're on TikTok, whatever. It's a lie. You posted two TikToks, Miro, three. I don't know how many. <laughs> don't follow me. <laughs> don't follow me. But like also not just that, like the Facebook, Facebook groups, the you know, there, there's drama everywhere. I don't understand the drama in the plant community. I don't care that someone sold a plant for $20,000. Boo-hoo, get over it, whatever. I don't care anymore. I used to care two years ago. I used to get very upset. Now I'm like, okay, well, whoever bought it, great for them. Great, you have $20,000. You spent it on that. I don't know what to tell you. I don't relate, not of my business. Can't say anything to that anymore. I see people get upset about so many things and I'm like, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Who is changing? No one's, no one's changing anyone's mind. Do you feel that we are all in these spaces that are like, what is the name? Like the isolated chambers, the echo chambers. And you know, we are just all people with similar opinions and we are just echoing each other's thoughts. And that's that. We're not changing anything. We're just getting upset over nothing. So why even be a part of anti-capitalist Facebook plan group. And this is what the video was initially about. We have worked ourselves up in the plant community into this very strange state, I feel, where everyone gets upset about so many things. I used to get some of the sides. I don't get anyone anymore because if you try to tell people to correct them, to educate them, they get upset, no one. It's like, shut up, shut up and leave, shut up and leave the group. I don't know, we all need to shut up and leave all the Facebook groups. That is my sentiment. And it's not just like the Facebook groups, it's on YouTube, on Instagram, on Reddit. And I don't know, I saw so many things that I find like they don't pass the vibe check. Oh, the plant influencers are stupid and dumb and you cannot talk about plants if you don't have a horticultural or botanical degree. I don't care. What is that thought? What is that thought? And I could really, really break this down because again, that is what the original outline was about, but I shan't. You sit on that, you think about that. I'm just not gonna think about it because it's not very useful for me. And this is not just about the plant community, you know, putting the phone down. It's about everything else. We see the news, we get the news on Instagram. News are everywhere, on Instagram, on Facebook. News in forms of memes. That's how we find out things on TikTok, everywhere. It's like impossible to escape. It's impossible not to know what is happening in the world. And it's really emotionally draining to know all of these things. And listen, don't do this thing that I do. Don't go to the comment section. You don't. I will go to the comment sections like, maybe I will run into people who align with my opinion. Let's see if people now align with my opinion. And the thing is they don't. And you just get enraged even more and you want to engage and sometimes you do and it's not very useful. I don't know why I do it. I know that it's not gonna end well, but I still like, maybe the world is a better place today. Maybe, maybe everyone is okay. Moving on, put the phone down. And the last is tip number six, find a high energy and high engaging activity. And hence the plants, right? Here we come to the plants. Repot a plant if it needs repotting, I'm sure. There is always something that needs to be repotted. There's always something that needs to be treated for mites, mealybugs, whatever, thrips. Take some cuttings, do that. Clean your windows, clean my windows. Go through Spotify, listen to 50 songs until you find the one. Don't watch TV shows or movies because that, I, it's not very, doesn't work for me. It really does not work for me. I will still be very upset. I just really need to get my mind onto something else. And I find that repetitive tasks really work here. Doing something with your hands, hence the repotting, but also I've been thinking about maybe painting again. Before the channel and before my university, I, as, because I was an exchange student in the US, I wanted to go to college and 
to major in art. I was I was pretty good with art. I have not picked up a pencil, a brush, or anything in t 10 years at least. But, you know, I decided to come back home to Serbia, went into architecture, got ma master's in architecture, and also didn't do anything with that, so that is great. I know how to spend my time really well, clearly. Um, what where was I leading with this oh yeah i was i was thinking about picking up drawing again especially hoya flowers and making some videos on that maybe that would be fun maybe it would be interesting maybe it would be terrible i don't know we will think about it but something like that i mean i don't know clay clay is fun i see all these videos and reels on instagram and tiktok and i'm like I could do that. I mean, obviously, I think I could do that. <laughs> Probably couldn't, but I'm like, maybe doing something with my hands like that and listening to a podcast or music. You know what? Actually, maybe I should get some clay. It sounds like a great idea. Get ready for a video that is going to be titled Atrocities That I Made in Clay When Someone Made Me Angry. It's gonna be wildly popular. It's gonna make, I'm gonna make figurines, little sculptures, and name them after people who annoyed me. It's gonna be like, this is Nick, this is Mark, this is Josh, this is Nick, this is Mark, this is Mark, this is also Mark, Josh, Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark has gotta go. It's gotta go. The story, all names, characters, and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious. No identification with actual persons, living or deceased, places, buildings, and products is intended or should be inferred. Anyways, the point of this chapter, part of the video, whatever, I feel that it's like, really, chapters should be reserved for books. Find some highly engaging activity to get your mind off of things, and if you still feel upset after doing all of these steps, then maybe it is worth it. Maybe it is worth it. Maybe you gotta say what you gotta say. I'm not one of those people to be like, I said what I said. I'm just not one of those people. I'm like, ooh, I said what I said and now I regret it and I want to take it back. So try to do something else instead if you can. And of course, it does not apply to all situations. Sometimes you got to interact right away. And that is that. So I think we're done. Are we done? We are done because my battery just got empty and I, this is a new one. So it means... Shut up, Miro. You talked a lot. Thank you for watching. I know this was a different video than all of my previous videos. Maybe it was not so different, but I don't know. I felt I needed to talk about this and I felt this would be potentially useful and let me know how you deal in these situations when someone makes you angry. My fellow Tauruses, what do you do? If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time in the next video. There might be one coming out on Wednesday. Don't know. We'll see. We'll see if we make it. But yeah, see you soon and stay zen out there. Just like me. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons for all of their amazing support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My two anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Beth Gibson, Betsy Bougie Panda, Catherine Molina, Daniela, Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Farah, Gina K, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Yovan Donat, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Kukel, Sokivi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Lepland, Steph, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Marcelina Novosadsky, Maria West, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Moa Edmund, Neil Yang, Niha Basu, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropical, Snina Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ, Plant Druid, Planting with Nat, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Robin Roos, Saloma Dahl, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Sybil Williams, Tanya Tessa Martins, The One True Kyle, Tristan Thomas, Tia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Xenia Green, Youth of the Walamut, and Zlalkov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, NDH, Angelina Farnan, Anna K, Brenda Little, Colleen Coyle, Levi, Constance, Kilone, Claudia L, Erin Keenan, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay Ann, Lisa Helling, Nella, Nerdy, Kathy, Plantilla, Nyering, Love, and Tang, Watana, Sria, Cool. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Alice Borolin, Kari, Christina Greengrass, Couture Helvetica, EDW, Emilia Bronson, Joanna Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lori Ann, Subramanian, Luzmin Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia. Chin Miller.